Okay, recording is on. Good morning, everyone. Um, those of you online and those of you in class, good morning to PC111, our uh, lectures on faith. Let's pray and then we'll get started together. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning. And uh, we welcome, Lord, the presence of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Spirit of God, to be our teacher, our guide, our counselor, our instructor. We ask that you will rest upon each of us, rest upon our hearts and minds. And, and Lord, even as we spend time in your word, Speak to us, teach us, establish us in truth. And may the things we hear, Lord, uh, be written upon the tables of our hearts so that we can live by them, we can walk in them, we can experience them. And uh, by your word and by your presence, do mighty things for the kingdom of God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So um, let's go in our um, lecture notes to chapter 16. Chapter 16, we're going to talk about how to exercise faith. I'm going to go ahead and share these notes as well online so we could see it. In the PDF, it's chapter 16. So the last couple of weeks, we uh, looked at different aspects of faith. Um, we talked about faith confession. We talked about praise. You, know, you, ex you express faith or exercise faith through praise, through action, uh, through endurance, and through determination, right? So these are the various aspects of faith. So when you and I are exercising faith in God, all these things are involved, right? We have to speak the word, we have to act, we praise, uh, we uh, are determined, uh, we endure through time, we don't give up. So all these things are involved. So today, in lesson number 16, we want to put it down in... You know, I could call it like steps of faith or in these action points. Right? So when you want to exercise faith in God, this is how you would do it. Right? Now, this is not a formula. I'm not giving a formula like A plus B plus C plus D. This, this, you'll get your miracle. You know? It's not like a formula. But it's more like, okay, these are the things I need to do while I am exercising faith in God. Right? These are things that go into the process of exercising faith in God. And we, of course, base it all on Scripture. We base it on what we see in the Bible, in the life of Abraham, and the life of other people, in the teachings of Jesus. Uh, and how it, so all that we have studied so far, all the 15 chapters, if we want to take that and put it in some bullet points and say, this is how, very simply, if you want to exercise faith in God, this is how you do it, right? So we will uh, make it, we will itemize it like this. Right? How do we exercise faith in God? And this applies to any area, whether you want to receive something from God, whether you want to over, you know, through faith, you want to overcome, through faith, you want to conquer, through faith, you want to achieve something, uh, through faith, you want to pursue a certain goal, whatever it is, this is how you would, Go about doing it. Okay. So uh, let's break this down uh, as an outline. Number one is to have a desired goal based on God's word. That means, what are you having faith for? You know, it just can't be, I have faith in God for anything. No, what is it? Very specific. Have a desired goal. What is it? You know, if it's healing. Okay, what, what, what you believe in God for healing? If it is for finances, if it is for accomplishing something, a goal in the ministry, right? what is it? Right? So 
we we know from Hebrews 11 1 faith is the substance of things hoped for right? so you have to have something specific a thing that you are hoping for so now for example um, when I uh, I, for the central service, I said, God, two services, 500 people in each service. So that's a goal, right? So in my mind, I'm not saying 50 people. I'm saying 500 people, right? So I see the hall full that way. So now that's what I will pray into. That's what I will have faith for, right? Or when I look at the Bible college, you will see on Saturday, it's just empty land. But in my mind, I'm thinking of buildings. We want to have Bible college. We'll have big church service, maybe Christian school. So many things I'm thinking, like, okay, all this we will build. So that's something already. Right? But when you go and see, you say, oh, I'm just seeing empty land. What is this? <laughs> but faith, you need to have a goal, a desired goal. And how can you, how can you see it? You can see it in your imagination. And so that imagination is very important, right? You say, God, that is my goal. I want to see that. And I imagine students coming from all over the world to study, you know, so maybe uh, hundreds of students, uh, hundreds of students on campus anytime. Students come to everywhere to study. And they say, where you want to go to Bible college? I want to go there. I want to go to APC Bible college, you know, students coming from all over the world. That's the goal, right? So, but now nothing It's just, Ah, this one land, what is it? <laughs> uh, we haven't bought it yet, you know, we're just going through the procedure. Um, but you have a desired goal. So then for ministry, I see thousands of churches all over India. So now okay, we have just like 15 churches around India. But when I pray, I'm seeing thousands of churches, not just India, but then around the world. All the students that we're training, you know, that they will go start churches, ministries. But these are the different goals that you have, right? So like that, you must have a, either a desired goal or many goals. You know? Nobody's preventing you from having many goals. But what I'm saying is you cannot have faith if you don't first have a goal, right? You must first have a desired goal. Right now, nothing is there, but you need to have a goal in order to have faith, okay? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And you're saying, God, that's my desire. That's what I want to see happen, right? And from there, you can keep expanding the vision. You can keep increasing it, you know, making it bigger and bigger and bigger, but you have to start with something. I said, God, I want to start with this. From there, you can make it bigger. Nobody's stopping you. And what you want to do, what you want to, you know, what is your goal? So whether it's, uh, a, you know, whatever it is, whether it's healing, whether, it, you know, a change in your circumstances, you're praying for the salvation of people, uh, you're praying for finances, you're praying for ministry objectives, whatever. It starts by having a desired goal. And this is something you must desire. You know, God can't desire it for you. Right? You have to desire it. Right? We study uh, that it takes your determination. You must be determined to achieve that goal. So that is on our side. We must be determined. God, I want to see this happen. Okay? Now, it has to be based on God's word, of course. Right? So does God want people to be saved? Yeah. So it's a good thing. Does God want to have churches planted? Of course, you find that in the Bible. You know, he, he told us to go make disciples of all nations. So does God want people to be healed? Of course, you know, so all those things are aligned to the word of God. So based on the word, you are desiring something in your life. Okay, that's where it starts. Now, you know, some people might say, well, uh, you must not have any desires. Don't have any desire, don't have any expectation. Well, if you don't have desire, if you don't have expectation, then you cannot have faith. What happened? You wanted to? Oh, 
OK, turn it or turn off or reduce it. So that's fine. Good, thank you. All right, so uh, faith requires that you have hope or have a desire or an expectation. So when people say, oh, don't expect anything, don't have any desire, that that's wrong. Because the Bible, Jesus said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So Mark eleven twenty four, 24, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Okay, one idea I have. I want to challenge each of you. Every week you memorize one verse. Every week, one verse you memorize. I will, I will, um, I will get this organized. But I want you to memorize before you leave Bible college. You must learn at least five hundred verses. Okay. Huh? Oh, you started. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Every day, one new verse. That I think is a little too much. <laughs> Every day, one verse. <laughs> because you have to repeat the verse many times to learn it. One verse a week is okay. Every day one verse is okay. It's up to you. But I think if you do uh, one verse a week uh, in one semester, you learn at least 16 verses. Uh, two semesters, 32. So four years, uh, three years. Yeah, about 16, 90, 96 verses. At least 100 verses you learn uh, in three years. Uh, but at least try to do more. Okay, uh, it's good to know the scriptures. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, so Jesus said, you know, if you look at example, Mark eleven twenty four, he said, whatever you desire. Or if you look at John fifteen verse seven, he said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what. You will, and it will be done for you. See, in both these verses, in both these verses, Mark 11, 24, John 15, 7, both these verses, our desire, our will is involved. That means you must desire. You must be determined. God, I want to see this. You know, think about Caleb. Oh, when he was 80 years old, he goes to Joshua and he says, give me this mountain. He wants that. 40 years of waiting did not, uh, you know, didn't discourage him. He says, give me this mountain. You know, even after 40 years, says, give me this mountain. That means he was determined to get it. So have a desired goal based on God's word. And I encourage you, write it down. Or if you can draw it, draw it. If you can paint it, paint it. You know, that this is what I want to see happen. This is what I want to see. Or these are the things I want to see fulfilled in my life. So write it down or draw it or sketch it or paint it or whatever. So that you can set, have it in front of you. God, I'm believing for this. Okay. Have a clear goal, desired goal. Okay, number two. We must be determined to have what God has promised. So not only must you have a desire, uh, ha have a goal, we must be determined to have that because God promised it. You know. Now this is a strange thing that just because God promised something doesn't mean it will happen. See. God has promised salvation for every person. The Bible already says, whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. It's already there. The Bible already says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's already there. But it will not happen automatically. People have to hear. And they have to 
believe. They have to believe. believe. It's not going to happen automatically. They have to hear the gospel. They have to believe. Then they will be saved. The promise for salvation is there. Salvation is already a given to people. But people have to receive it. And they have to say, I want to be saved. Mm -hmm. right? So similarly, we have a part to play. Right? That we must be determined to have what God has promised. Say, God, this is what you said. And I must have it in my life. I must see it happen. You know, we must be determined. Jesus said it like this, you know, in, in, I don't know if it's here in the scripture, but he said in uh, uh, Matthew 11 and verse 12, Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. See, when you memorize scripture, you can just, you can make your own message as you preach. <laughs> right? So we know scripture, right? So memorize scripture, it's a good thing. We used to have these packs before we used to make these packs, but there used to be a set of cards on each topic, like healing, we'll have 10 cards, 10 healing verses, faith, we'll have 10 cards, uh, 10 verses on faith. So we used to give it out, uh, but we stopped making it. But I, you know, that's the easy way. You can always flip the cards, you can learn it. So you learn 10 verses on healing, 10 verses on faith, 10 verses on different subjects. You know, you've learned at least like that. So uh, we will try to get that made again. But uh, so see, your mind is like a library. It, it, when you go to a library, all the books on a particular subject are kept in a particular place. So if you want to find any book on one subject, you can go there, take it. So your mind, if you organize it like a library, right? Uh, you can think. So for example. I can start from Genesis, go to Revelation, one by one I can give you all the scriptures on healing. Or I can start from Genesis, go to Revelation, give you scriptures on faith or topic, any topic. Thank you. Because I have arranged it in my mind like that. Memorize it. So starting from Genesis, you just tick, 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 go through, book by book. So when you memorize, try to arrange it in your mind like a library scriptures okay so somebody says can you preach on faith oh yeah let's start from genesis to revelation or if you don't have so much time you can start somewhere else and you can preach on faith whatever okay so going back to matthew chapter 11 verse 12 jesus said he said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force okay. so jesus taught us different things about the kingdom of god he said he used two pictures he said if you want the kingdom of god very interesting if you want to experience the kingdom of god you have to be like a child but he also said if you want to experience the kingdom of god you have to be like a warrior. Right? For example, Matthew 18, verses 2 and 3. He said, unless you become like little children, you cannot experience the kingdom. So there he said, you have to be like little children. children. Like a child, you have to come. Then you'll receive the kingdom. But Matthew 11, verse 12, you have to be like a warrior. The violent take it by force. So you have to be like a child, but you also have to be like a warrior. What about a child? About a child, child just believes. Doesn't ask. You know, if if uh an adult, you know, you, you take a child, you make the child maybe uh, sit on something and say, jump, I'll catch you. The child will not say, show me your muscle, let me see. <laughs> He's not going to ask those questions. No. It just trusts and will jump and then the adult will catch the child. So as a child, 
we have childlike faith or childlike trust in God. But he said, you also have to be like a warrior. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent, that means the aggressive, the warrior-like, they take it by force. Okay, so to be like a warrior. Okay? What about a warrior? They're willing to fight. They are not afraid of the battle. You know, they're willing to press through. So in order to experience the kingdom of God, Jesus had both. Right? You be childlike, have childlike trust, confidence. You be like a warrior. You're determined. You're going to fight. Right? You're not going to give up. So that's the second point. That means you and I must be determined to, um, to have what God has for. I'm willing to fight for it. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. So the devil or uh, the things of this world are not going to stop me from taking or possessing what God has promised for me. Right? So I'm not going to start. I'm going to willing. I'm willing to fight the good fight of faith to possess what God has. So there must be that determination in order to receive from God. If we are just wishful, uh, if you just okay, let it happen. If it happens, and so on and so forth, it's very likely that we're not going to receive from God. The third thing that we must do as a as a way to exercise faith in God, we're just summarizing, is to fill our heart with the Word of God. Fill our heart. Keep on going back to the same scriptures. Why? Because we believe with the heart. Right? We believe with the heart. And our believing must come to a place where there's no unbelief, no doubt. How can we do that? Fill your heart with the word of God. For the heart man believes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we need to hear the word of God. Right? Keep on hearing. So you go back, keep reading the same scriptures or you know, keep meditating the same scriptures. Whatever you're believing God for God, this is what you said. This is what you said. This is what you said. This is what God said. So you come to a place where your heart is Fully persuaded that what God has promised, He will do it. You come to that place, right? So there's no more, no doubt, no shadow of a doubt that what God said, He will do. But for that, you have to fill your heart with the Word of God, right? And we have to constantly do it. You know, we can't say, "Well, I read that promise two two weeks ago. Uh, when did you eat rice?" Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. You know, you, we eat food every day. Now imagine, we may, we may have been eating chapati for 20 years. You don't get tired. Again, you eat next day. Again, the same thing you eat. Right? You eat the same thing again and again and again and again. Why? It's food. Right? We don't say, oh, I ate it so many times already. So, okay. Yeah, of course, you ate it so many times, but you're hungry. You eat the same thing again. Right? That's the word of God. Right? Of course, we have read it weeks before, months before, years before. But you read it again. You go back and meditate, just like how you, you and I have food. The same food, but our body needs it. So we eat. Same scripture. Our heart needs it. Feed your spirit. With the word of God, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? So feed your word, feed your heart with that word, uh, fill it with that word, keep on meditating uh, on the word of God. Right? So until you see the thing fulfilled, keep on meditating in the word. Uh, Vijay, you have a question? Oh, okay. All right. So, number four, what do we do? in exercising faith in God. Number four is we pray and we receive by faith. So prayer, as we saw earlier, is one of the ways that we can exercise faith in God. You pray and you receive by faith. That means you go before God. So Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Jesus said, what things you ask 
when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Right? So notice what Jesus said. What things you ask or uh, the old King James, the King James would say, whatever you desire when you pray. And this is the New King James Version. What things you ask, whatever you desire right? when you pray. Believe that you receive them. So what must we believe? We must believe that we receive it. Okay? Believe that you receive. Believe that you receive. And you will have. That means believing that you receive happens before you actually receive. That means in your heart, as far as in your, by faith, in your heart, it is already yours. Hmm? And then you will receive. Okay? So believing that you receive happens before you actually receive it. Jesus taught us that. That means in your heart, it's already yours. In your heart, God has already given it to you. By faith, you've already received. Believe that you receive them. Okay. Uh, another parallel scripture, I don't know if it's here. If you turn to 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, John says, says this, This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Then verse 15, And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have. 1 John 5 verse 15. We know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And notice what he is saying. He didn't say, we know that we are going to have. He said, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. It matches with Mark 11, 24. Believe that you receive. That means you know that you have. It, it's not, I know that I'm going to have. I know that I have. You believe that you have received them. And then he says, and you will have them. Correct. Suppose, Vimal, I say I give you, I, suppose I tell you I will give you 500 rupees. Let me first check. Yeah. Okay. Example. Example. Suppose I give my words to Vimal. Vimal, I promise to give you 500 rupees. Now, I've given my word. Okay, now this is real, not joke. Suppose I tell you really, Vimal, I'll give you 500 rupees. You believe? Yeah, he believes. He said he'll give 500 rupees. I believe. Then immediately, he, you are 500 rupees richer. So you believe that you have? Already happy. You have not received it yet, the meaning in the natural. In the natural, you have not received it yet. But because the promise was made, because the word was given, you know that you have. 
five hundred rupees more. You believe that you have. So spiritually, this is natural, but spiritually, you believe that you have. It's mine. So you can start planning. Five rupees today afternoon. I'll go to the bakery. I'll buy cake for all my friends. I will uh, whatever, whatever, however you want to spend. You can already start planning because you know you have. You believe that you have received. It's not come yet, but you know that you have. You believe that you have received. And so you're already in, you're acting like it is yours. You're already planning. You tell all your friends, hey guys, today afternoon for tea time, we will have nice tea. Because 500 rupees, I believe I have received. And then you will have it. Think you have to receive it. Come, you, this is this is real. Now you buy snacks for everybody. Come on, come on, come on. This example, I right. guess okay, five hundred, right? Yeah, okay. So now you have it. Take it. Please be seated. Okay. So you snack. You buy snacks for everyone. Right. Evening. So so example. Okay, example. So. What has happened? There's a word given, promise. When you pray, you say, God, based on your word, I believe that I have received. So in your heart, inside you, in the natural, nobody sees it. But in your heart, God has already given it to me i know that i have i know that i have See, based on mark 11 24 first john 5 15. i know that i have. You know, whatever i asked based on his his word then it's he says mark 11 24 going back to mark 11 24 and you will have them. So first you believe, then you receive. You believe, before, believing happens before receiving. First you believe, then you receive. That's how you exercise faith. Many of us saying, I will believe after I receive. That is not Bible faith. Bible faith is you believe before you receive. And how can you believe? Very simple. With the heart, man believes. With the heart, man believes. Remember, Romans 10, verse 10. With the heart, man believes. So you can believe. You can believe that you receive. Even when you don't see it, you don't feel it, it's okay. Because believing is of the heart. And you believe before you receive. Believing happens before receiving happens. Or if you want to put it the other way, receiving happens after believing happens. So first we have to believe. Then you will receive. Many people are waiting to receive. Then they will believe. Like John, not John. Who is that? Thomas. Like Thomas. After I touch, then I will believe that Jesus rose from the dead. So that's Thomas' kind of faith. But the Bible kind of faith is you believe before you receive. Because God has promised in his word. Because it's in the Bible. Because God said, and God will not fail his word. Whatever God said is true. So with a heart, I believe. Right? So you pray and you receive by faith. Now, the thing is this. To arrive at this place where you believe in your heart, that might take some time. Because faith has to rise. So what do you do? You spend time in the word. You spend time in prayer. To come to this place 
where you believe that you receive. Sometimes it might take a few days, a few weeks, sometimes even a few months. It's okay. But you, you, you stay in the Word of God. And you stay it before God. Until your heart comes to that place where you know that you have. Like how 1 John 5.15 says, we know that we have. So I know I have. But you don't see it. Yeah, faith is the evidence of things not seen. So I, I, I don't need to see it to believe it. I know I have it because I've come to that place of faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. If I see it, then I don't need, I don't need faith because it's there. Right? So to come to that place of faith, it might take a little bit of time. You, you know, you spend a few days in prayer and meditating in the word and, you know, before God, say, God, this is what your word says. I believe it. I, I know it will be done. I thank you, Father, for it. And you don't worry about it. But then you arrive at that place of faith. So until that time, you may be praying about the same matter. Over and over again. Right? So it's okay. Right? So some people ask the question. Is it alright to pray for the same thing. More than once. Is it alright? So my answer would be yeah it's okay. Because the important thing is to come to that place of faith. Where you know. That you have. Where you believe. That you receive. So in order to come to that place where it is settled in your heart, you may pray over a matter over and over again. You may spend time in the Word on that same matter. God, this is what your Word says. You said this. You, this is what you promised. And, and, and you're going over it in prayer. You're going over it in your meditation. And, and, and until your heart comes and says, Okay, God, it's mine now. I believe I received. I believe it's done. I don't have to worry about it now. God has spoken. It's done. Anna. Ah. So so we we have to be in line with the word of God. Right? So that's our first thing. It should be based on God's word. If it is not based on God's words, and if it's not in the will of God, then there is no point even asking, right? Because, uh, example, James chapter 4, verse 2, he says, You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. Hebrews, James, right? Um, James 4, verse 2. You ask. And you do not receive because you ask. What is this? Verse 3, sorry. Yeah, James 4, verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. That means, that means you're asking wrong. Yeah? So we have to ask according to God's word, uh, in line with God's plan, will, and purpose. Right? If we ask outside of that, then the Bible says we're not. It's not Something God's going to grant. Yeah. So that's right. Number one, it has to be based on God's word. You start from there. This is what God has promised. If God has promised it, then definitely we, can, we are supposed to have faith for it, to receive it. Okay. Then number two, be determined to have what God has promised. Number three, you fill your heart with the word. Number four, we pray and we receive by faith. What was I saying at that time? Mm. So, yeah, so if you pray over a matter for some time, that's fine until you come and come to that place where you believe it.
Why? So Wimble's question is, why is only why is faith? So uh, we cannot say it's only faith that pleases God, right? There are a lot of other things. For example, obedience pleases God, right? First Samuel fifteen twenty two, it says, you know, um, uh, uh, obedience is better. <laughs> obedience is better than sacrifice. Right? First Samuel fifteen twenty two. So obedience pleases God. First Samuel chapter two verse thirty, honoring God pleases God. Right? Those who honor me, I will honor. Right. So there are many things that please God. When we walk in love, it pleases God. Right. When we walk in holiness, it pleases God. Right. But what the Bible does say is, without faith, Hebrews eleven six. That's the verse we are talking about. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because, Romans 14, whatever is not, 14.23, I think, I'll check it. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14.23, whatever is not from faith is sin. That means all these other things are good, you know, obedience, holiness, showing mercy, compassion, all those things are good. They please God. But the Bible says, without faith, I cannot please God. Why? Because if it is not done in faith, it's no use. So everything I do, obedience, it has to come out of faith. It has to be done in faith. Okay? So, there, there are many things that please God, but everything has to be done with a heart of faith in God. Okay, so we look at it from that. Okay, let me just see if there are any questions on the online class. Are there any questions there? Whoops. All right. Any questions from students who are online? Everyone's following me so far? All good? Any questions? Okay. Let's go back to the notes. So number five, next step in releasing or exercising faith in God is to speak our faith. Okay. Again, Jesus taught us this in many places. He said one of the ways we release our faith is to speak our faith in many places. And we look at Mark 11, 22 and 23, well-known verses. Verse 22, Jesus answered, said to them, have faith in God. And then continued, verse 23. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So how do I exercise faith? I need to speak my faith. I need to speak out of a believing heart. So he says, don't doubt in your heart. You believe that what you say will come to pass. You will have what you say. So I go before God in my time of prayer and I say those words. I say, you know, in the name of Jesus, I declare such and such a thing over my life. I declare such and such a thing to happen, you know, on based on the word of God. Okay. So you're saying with no doubt in your heart. Okay, so you've gone through those steps. You've, you've, you've filled your heart with the word of God. You've prayed and believed that you received. Now you're saying, you're declaring it. Right? And again, some, you know, the question is, how, how often shall I say it? Well, until the mountain moves. Right? Until you see uh, 
the desired goal achieved. Keep saying it. Keep declaring it. Right? So why doesn't it happen when I say it once? It's because we are learning how to exercise faith and we need to grow in our faith. So don't get discouraged if you have to keep speaking to the mountain or keep saying the same thing. It's okay. You stand in it because you and I are growing in these things. We are learning and we are growing. Right? So doesn't matter. We are coming to that place where you know we can be in a place of faith and we can speak and we will see things done. But until such time, just keep speaking. Don't get discouraged. Okay? So you keep speaking to the mountain until the mountain moves. You keep speaking your desired result until you see that happen. You know, you are exercising your faith. This is what God said. This is what God said. You know, I will not give up. Right? So keep declaring. Maybe it's to your life situation. Maybe it's a life challenge. Maybe it's a, a sickness that you're believing God to heal. You continue just to um, keep declaring the word. Then number six is you act in accordance to your faith. Right? So this is also be something we learned earlier. You need to act in line with your faith. You keep doing whatever you do. Whatever steps you can take, you take towards seeing that dream accomplished towards seeing that goal fulfilled you keep taking steps of faith whatever you can do keep taking keep taking you know don't get discouraged keep taking those steps of faith keep acting in line with your faith uh, we we saw second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11 where God fulfills the work of faith with power you know so that means when you do your work of faith the power of God goes in to complete it, to make it, you know, to fulfill it. So you do your work of faith and God will fulfill it with his power. And as you and I work our faith, what happens? By works, our faith is made perfect. You know, that means as you're working your faith, your faith is being brought to maturity. It's becoming mature. It's becoming strong. So you need to act your faith. Keep acting your faith. Whatever steps you can take, you keep taking. Because by works, your faith is made perfect. Right? And without works, faith is dead. But as you keep doing whatever you can, your faith is brought to a place of maturity. Okay. We're going to pause here. We'll go for our tea break, coffee break, whatever break. We'll come back in 10 minutes. Um, any questions? Uh, please feel free to ask. All right. So we'll be back in 10 minutes and we will continue this. Thank you.